All right. Well, good morning to everybody. Thank you, Brother John. That's, a, that's a, I don't know if you guys understand, but that's a very big deal for our brother to stand up like that. Amen. So anyway, um, I'm going to be trying to invest more in our men than I have, you know, previously. I mean, honestly, uh, it was my mistake um, not really understanding how, how involved our people wanted to be, you know, and uh, it, it came up to me that brother was like, where's your sign-ups, man? I'm like, well, for what? What do you mean? It's like, what? You know, what if someone wants to help you or something? And I was like, oh, okay. You know, I'll put a sign-up out. We'll see if anyone signs it. And the whole thing was filled up in one service. I was like, Amen. oh, it's like that. <laughs> yeah. So um, so anyway, I just want to really thank God, you know, for, for you guys and just your heart to see God do something. And... Um, uh, it's, it is our prayer Sunday. We're going to break off in a moment and pray. So I don't have my traditional prayer message. Um, but what I do have um, is a message for our church. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to entitle this message, uh, Our Church's Main Purpose. All right. Uh, let me pray one more time. God, please, your hand of blessing now. Please ask God that by the blood of Jesus Christ, you'd put your hand of blessing over the service, over the preaching. Help us, God, to hear you um, the way you should be heard, and help me to preach the way you should be preached, and your, your word will be lifted up, and we'll know you showed up. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. So one day a prince uh, of India rode his white horse through one of the most impoverished towns in his uh, kingdom. Now he approached a very poor man, and he stated to this poor man, what would you give to the king today? The poor man looked at his cup of rice. It was all that he owned in the world. And he handed the prince three grains of rice, which the prince returned three golden coins and rode off. And as he rode off, that beggar was wondering, I wonder what would have happened if I would have given all. You know, and um, so our church has been brought to, uh, I believe, a, a new chapter, not in a new year, but uh, the Lord, as I've told you guys, woke me up uh, after a pretty extreme sickness coming through the new year. At, once I shook it off, he woke me up, and my mind was just flooding with the opportunities that he's really given us here. And, um, and so with new opportunities come new challenges, and um, this chapter, I think, in, in our churches, uh, you know, as we're turning the page, I, I, I think it would be entitled something to the effect of uh, maybe what Luke 19, 17 says. If you want to look, look over there, Luke 19, 17. In Luke 19, 17. And in Luke 19, 17, it says... And he said unto him, uh, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast been faithful in very little, uh, have thou authority over ten cities. So I, w I would personally call this next chapter for our church called Stewardship. Stewardship. Because, I mean, just look around. I mean, we got people here. We got people that want to serve God here. And it, it's like if uh, we need to start thinking about this. You know, I think last week we were talking about you know, if, if you're not going to do anything for God now, what are you really going to do? Uh, you think we got millions of years left? I mean, I don't believe millions of years anyway, but, but the point is, it's just like, we don't have much time. This thing is just about over. You know, we have such a great opportunity right now to start doing really uh, what we never had when attendance was low, you know, and... Um, some of you have been, you know, uh, with us since the Oxford Inn. Poor little Isaiah, you know, he was stuck with me that whole time. Poor guy, you know, he thought he'd get away from me in the Navy. But as we see, God works in mysterious ways and brought him back, <laughs> you know. But, um, you know, but back then, you know, we, we had help. And I, I'm not trying to discredit anything, but. Um, maybe it was my mentality, you know, I, maybe I didn't see the help that was there, but um, I don't think that we were really attempting great things so much for our great God. I mean, we were trying to implement street preaching, and, you know, we saw um, it brought a different spiritual temperature into the church that eventually the Lord got out, 
So, I mean, for those of you that were there, uh, I, I don't need to say nothing else about that. But God was done with that. Not that we're not street preaching anymore. It's just we're out there different. Amen. Amen. Just like we were yesterday. <laughs> but um, so I'm going to be attempting to lead our congregation to a place. And I'll just be honest that I've never been before. You know, uh, if, if you just met me, I'm not, I'm not the most outgoing guy to try new things. Really, uh, I'm kind of a one-note Nancy in the sense that, you know, if, if you know, I, I don't know. I'm not that outgoing, but I just feel like we have a great opportunity. We have a great group of people. And um, this place that I've never been is going to be a place where we're trying to involve people in the ministry and um, because I see the hearts of our folks you know and um, like we had I think almost like 12 or 13 people including the kids and the dogs but um, you know you count everybody when you're small but um, you know Moses was there no I'm joking but um, we had almost 13 people show up to the track table and street preaching yesterday And, and it's like what am I doing with that? I mean, so now we've decided that, hey, well, we'll have a group of guys we'll cut off while the track table's manned, and we'll street preach too. I mean, uh, there's plenty of opportunity right there. I mean, we could track cars on the way to the corner and track them on the way back. I mean, I don't know. There's just, there's no excuse for us to just sit here and do things the way we've always done them and say, you know, that, I don't know. I, anyway, so I just hope you're understanding my heart in this, where I want to start involving people, and as far as the men go, I want to give an opportunity to start training our men, you know, to preach. Whether you feel like you've been called to preach or not, you know, um, I talked to a, uh, he had a ministry where he would go around churches and he would sing, and I was just a, a new, new to Baptist churches, and I asked him, you know, like, so do you preach or what? He's like, you know, I'm not a pastor. I'm not an evangelist. But he said, he leaned over to me, but he said, but if somebody wants me to give an answer for the hope that lies within me, I'm ready. Amen. So I was like, whoa. So you know what? Maybe you're not called to be a pastor. That's fine, you know. You can still learn a lot from the Bible. You can still learn a lot by little projects that we can give the men, you know, uh, so um, I don't know that uh, it'll probably turn into at some point, and I'm praying for the timing, but like a preaching class. But right now it's just going to be the, like the men's coffee. We're going to do it once a month, and we're going to meet and just kind of uh, see where everyone's at. And uh, you got the dates in the bulletin there. So also uh, this next chapter for the church called Stewardship is going to be organizing and uh, we're going to start trying to organize things, trying to start on time. And I apologize. I've been kind of lethargic on that, you know, but um, it, it's right to start on time. You know, God deserves our best. And if we're if you're on a job, they wouldn't expect any less from you, you know. So um, and essentially these things that we're going to implement are just cleaning up. We're not changing the Bible. We're not changing the gospel. We're not changing the preaching. We're not changing what we do. And I mean, as far as how we do it, but we're going to improve it. Amen. You know, it's like you, you use that same old pocket knife that you've been using for 11 years. You know what you got to do eventually that pocket knife? That's right, brother. You got to sharpen that thing, Amen. you know, or else you will be ineffective. And, you know, you want to talk about blades. I know about blades, man. I did auto glass for years. I'm third generation auto glass. My grandpa that started the whole business or the whole family in auto glass, you know what he said about a dull blade? He said, a dull blade only cuts you. And I'm like, you know, as basic as that, dude, that is, that is deep. I, I chew on that. I don't know. I mean, that, that's where I live right there. I mean, you know, because I work with razor blades and stuff. But, you know, we need to take some time to sharpen this thing and clean it up and make it presentable and, we need to make sure the Lord Jesus Christ is lifted up, you know? We don't got time for this junk. We don't got time. We don't got time for all that. Amen. You know, we'll clean it up. And, uh, well, you know where my first problem was is I was looking at your guys' church track. Anyone recognize this? Yes. And I was looking at this, and you guys have three points here that pretty much are supposed to sum up your church, Right? 
And the first one says, exalt the Savior. And then it has Romans 11:36. For of him and through him and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Amen. Does anybody here disagree with that? No. Not me. I don't disagree with that. Then it says, edify the saints. Feed the flock of God, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly. You got a bunch of verses right there. Anybody disagree with that? No. No? How about evangelize the sinners? For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth. Anyone disagree with that? No. You know, so it's with this in mind, you know, essentially I'm, I'm calling all of our hands here. You know, that um, I'm naming this message here, our church's main purpose. And what is it? It's the first one, exalting the Savior. Amen. You know, um, so... We look now to the Word of God. Go to 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 14. And look at verse 13, uh, 33. Sorry, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 33. And it says, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. You know, and, and really that's what I'm that's what I'm seeing on the on the horizon for our, our church is as we're just cleaning things up, you know. How can we glorify God more while we're at church and while we're at home? How can we glorify God more? You know, and uh I think anyone here that's too proud to say, Well, there's no way that I can glorify God more. I'm exactly doing everything I always need to do. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I think you got one up on Paul. You know, I, I think you're even doing better than him, which means you're not. And um, so I, I, as as last night, I was kind of praying about this message here, and I know it's a little different. You know, I wanted to give you four things about how I believe, you know, we could exalt the Savior more and more in our main purpose. Amen. So the n- first thing is going to be showing up intentionally. Showing up intentionally. Amen. You know, uh, Sunday should be a day dedicated to God. Amen? Now, this is the odd thing. 50 years ago, 100 years ago, you didn't have to say things like that. Right. You didn't. I mean, I personally remember when we moved to Palmdale in 1986, um, Everywhere was closed on Sunday. Does anyone remember the places being closed out here? I mean, or wherever you were at? <laughs> and it was closed. And I remember having conversations with my dad, like, why can't we just go here and get this? And, oh, they're closed. It's Sunday. You know, and that's no more. Everywhere is open now. Everyone's working now. Even the Christians work now. You know, and uh, I can't tell you how many times just in my short ministry, I've tried to counsel people when they're doing their uh, their uh, resumes for these jobs to say, leave Sundays off. Tell them you'll work 24 hours a day the rest of the week. Leave Sundays alone. Sorry, bro. Not right now. But um, we need to be dedicated to God intentionally. You know, where we make an intentional focus on God and church. You know, you think about what would our mornings really look like if we were going to dedicate our Sunday to to the Lord, you know, um, it would be very different what we're listening to if we're even watching anything, you know, um, one thing I could tell you is like me and Mary Chris, well, I know our house is different because I'm a pastor, okay, and I'm slamming Sunday morning, I'm trying to get everything straightened up, and, but um, maybe God knew that's how lazy I was, you know, I mean, that, you know what, you need you need the Bible, Randy. You need more of the Bible in you and in your house. And so he puts me in a headlock and says, guess what? You know, all these people are waiting for you. What do you got? You know, so it gets my nose in the book. But um, I've noticed, you know, when something's turned on on Sunday morning that is not of God, not of the Bible, it's just something worldly. I mean, it's not necessarily bad or whatever, but it just really kind of g- goes like, Arr! And it's like, what is that? And it brings like a different feeling to the whole morning, you know. And we probably as Christians need to be more mindful of these things. You know, what are we really doing on Sunday? Because like, is it just, is it intentional that we're coming to church? Or is it a second thought? 
Or is it like, oh, if I make it, I make it. And the fact is, I think a Christian that loves God and uh, at least feels that, that you're called to this church for some way, shape, or form, you know, that, that you'd be like, you know what? I'm going to be at church. I'm not going to be sliding in the parking lot, you know, uh, which, I mean, hey, man, even I've had days like that. But, <laughs> but we could all sharpen up a little there. Amen? Amen. 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 And, um, but every day, you know, not just Sundays, we should make the Christian life intentional. You know, you didn't land here, uh, by osmosis, you know, like, uh, we're to live intentional Christian lives. You know, um, if you, you know, I, I used to preach very often, maybe some of you remember me saying it, but, you know, I mean, I've always wanted to preach, you know, your neighbor's Christianity, you know, and it wasn't the neighbor that your Christianity lives, but it's when you go to uh, interview your neighbor on what Christianity would look like. It's what they would say a Christian would be doing. You know, and, oh, well, that's not Bible, and blah, 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 okay? You know, the fact is the world knows what a Christian looks like. They know what they talk like. They know where they should be on Sunday. They know if they should be drinking, smoking, doing dope, shooting needles in their own. They know all about it. And they know what a Christian should be doing and should not be doing. And, and uh, I get that. Well, I've had them tell me myself, you know, when I was in the wrong way. And it's just like, wow, I've, I've really got some sermons from Balaam's ass, you know. And I can't look back and say God didn't use that unsaved, wicked person that knew better than I did as a saved Christian, you know. And uh, but anyway. A, we should purpose to worship God here at church. Amen? Amen. You know, and um, you think about this is an act of worship. And a worship is partly a sacrifice. And maybe some of you dealing with me every week is really a sacrifice. You know, but God sees your sacrifice. Amen. <laughs> preach that. Preach that. You know, but, um, but we should purpose to worship God here. You know, when you come here to church, purpose to be a blessing to others. Not, not just for them, for God. For God. You know, and when we're around people, like, think about how you're being portrayed. You know, think about, I mean, you can come to church and just be some kind of, like, sour person, you know, and wonder why no one's really wanting to talk to you. Or you can come and be happy and try to be an encouragement and, I'm not asking you to be fake, but I am asking you to just think for a moment. Who are people that you're drawn to? Are you drawn to people that are in a continuous depression that can't be encouraged with the word of God and preaching and praying and singing? Or are you drawn to people that, you know what, they kind of lift you up, you know? And uh, I think, you know, the answer to that question is the second person. You're probably going to be drawn to them. But you need to be that kind of person then. You've answered your own question. Next, we should purpose to learn something about God when we come to church. Amen. You know, and um, I don't know exactly what that would look like. And I've heard arguments on should you take notes on preaching or should you only take notes on teaching. And you know what? You've got to pray about that. But what I do know is you and I should purpose to learn something when we come to church. That's right. You know, I've been in services where they, they would blast pastor uh, my my pastor, I mean, he had so much going on, and you know what? He wasn't always knocking it out of the park, you know. And and I think at the end of his ministry that I got to see, you know, it was just it was faithfulness was the message. Like watch this, you know. I've had two knee surgeries, two hip surgeries, and watch me stand up here with the King James Bible and point you to Jesus Christ again. Amen. And it's just like you know that speaks, man. That speaks, you know, but I could have never seen that if I would not have went to church to learn something. You know, you, you can be in service and nitpick everything. And you can try to say where everyone's wrong, how they dress wrong, how they talk wrong, how the preacher said this. And you could pick apart the whole thing or you can have an attitude to come to church and learn something about God. I mean, if God could use Balaam's ass, I mean, I'm sure he could use me. <laughs> amen. amen. I knew I'd get an amen back there. Okay, all right, I see it. But you know what? 
When we come to church, we should purpose to grow closer to God. Amen. You know, this is an act of worship. That's right. You know, so I mean, um, I'm not trying to preach Old Testament, <coughs> but I think these things are written aforetime for our learning. But there was a way people would dress That's right. when they'd approach God. You know, I mean, here, here I'll give you a clear, clear point right here. Moses, he's walking around in the wilderness. He notices this bush, and it's burning, and it's not going out. And our seeker-sensitive, friendly God says, take off your shoes. And Moses said, oh, but these are my favorite shoes. He said, I don't care. If you're coming any closer, you're taking those shoes off. I could care less what you think about it, care less about what you feel, you know. And, and guess what? Moses got the picture real quick, and he's like, oh, <laughs> I'll take these shoes off, <laughs> you know. And uh, I don't know what that looks like for you, and I'm not going to lay a hard line, but God, God knows what you're able to do. Amen. If you don't own clothes, I mean, we have people in, in this church right now who have been known to get somebody a suit. I'm just telling you, I've seen it with my own two eyes. If you don't have the clothes, uh, my point is we, none of us have an excuse. You know, and, well, Randy, are you trying to slam down legalism? No, I'm trying to help you love the Lord the way we all should. Amen. Amen? And I've had to have people put it on me the same, you know, and, um, and I appreciated it. Maybe you don't at the time, but later you look back and you're like, you know, they, they were right. You know, <laughs> that, you know, we so we need to show up intentionally with purpose and we need to show up intentionally with punctuality. Now, this counts everywhere in life, especially church. Amen. Amen. And I know this has been one of my one of my grandest sins. <laughs> but, but um, you know, I'm going to try to get better, you know, and we'll try to start on time. And, uh, you know, try not to preach at you for three hours like we do every Sunday, you know. But uh, and I know you guys could take it. But the point is, like, I could I could spend a few more minutes trying to say something in fewer words, too, you know. And because um, I know you guys are all praying for me and I've, and I've noticed the prayers, you know. And right here, I just want to testify like Mary Chris. She got a couple text messages from people that don't even go to our church yesterday before the track table, and they text, we're praying for your, your track table to go well. Amen. And four, pe four people got saved. That's right. wow. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And, uh, and two people went out street preaching for the very first time. Right. And, uh, I mean, as far as I go, I'm like, I'm on cloud nine, man. And, and uh, so I know somebody's praying, amen? I don't think it was just these text message people outside of the church. I think it's our folks who are praying for this thing, you know, and um, we need to continue doing that. So we're going to show up intentionally. Number two, we're going to shout out joyfully. You know, we're going to participate in the service. I think you've noticed already we get some amens in our church. I don't frown upon amens. Like, you know what, um, how I've heard it explained to me, you know, and it was explained to, uh, to some third world people this way. And I'll, I'll, I'll complete the story because uh, Dr. Peacock and, and Dr. Lintz, they uh, went to some third world country. I forget where it was at this point, but I destroyed the whole story already. But anyway, they were kind of this third world people were kind of like, why are you guys amen and during the service? What's that all about? And they said, well, it's kind of like. When you start hearing something good, it's kind of like God puts a fire under you like a tea kettle, you know, and, and like that, that tea kettle, man, it can only handle so much before it goes. Boo! So it, they're like, oh, OK, we get it. We get it. And uh, so anyway, they go back to the next service and all of a sudden in the service, these third world people, they're like, boo! <laughs> And, and but I think that's a pretty that's a pretty good way to explain it. You know, it's just like it encourages the preacher when you go amen. You know, um, it encourages other people around you when they see that they can rejoice in the Lord. You know, you don't want to be a wet blanket, amen. And if some like you don't know what that amen cost, you don't know how God just spoke to that person. 
And I mean, <laughs> I've seen it all, man. Like, I, I've been accused of going to the altar too much. And it's like, if they knew me like, like my wife knew me, they'd say, you need to be there more, bro. <laughs> you, you know? But I mean, I've been accused from Christians that love God, that love the King James Bible, of going up to the altar to just make a show. And it's like, I'm sorry, like, have we met before? Like, I, you guys are the ones that showed me to go to the altar. And, like, I thought there was a purpose for going up to the altar. And not that it's some Old Testament altar with some Levitical priest throwing blood and hiss up. And it's, no, but if you need a place to pray, <laughs> we got it right here. There's room. Amen. <laughs> I mean, maybe you can't get up. Just pray there. That's your altar there. But, but the point is, like, we're worshiping God here, and I'm not going to accuse somebody of worshiping him too much. Amen. You know, the, uh, and we, all, we always joke about this, but, you know, the, uh, <laughs> you know how to identify a compromiser? You know, you identify a compromiser from a guy who has one less conviction than you. You know how to identify a legalist? Well, a legalist is somebody with one more conviction than you. You see? <laughs> and, and the universe, last time I checked, wasn't uh, going around any of us. You know, we're not the center. Jesus Christ is the center. Amen? And if he tells someone to say amen, stay in your lane. I mean, maybe, maybe that could be, you prayed that morning like, God, I want to learn something in service. And you show up, and you're looking around, and all these people are saying amen, and like, or getting encouraged and stirred up, and you're sitting there like, why don't I feel like that? Maybe that's your lesson. I don't know. But that's my point. It's like maybe it, the lesson wasn't even in the message. Maybe the lesson was just looking at <coughs> encouraged Christians and wondering where your joy went. Can you hear me, Lorenzo? We good? Okay, good. Amen. Okay. Amen. We're, we're going to have uh, speakers next week, I think, if everything works out good. They're all sitting in my living room. Um, a family donated a sound system to the church, and, um, and it was Christian and Genesis. And they, well, <laughs> the Lord laid it on their heart. And, you know, I, I do want to put, if, if anybody wants to give toward that, just give it straight to them. Because brother came right out of his pocket for that. You know, so, I mean, if you want a piece of that, there it is. It's on the table. That, that's another opportunity right there to worship God and help someone. You know, Moses was up there. He's holding up his rod as, it, as the Israelites are warring. And his arms started getting tired. Who's going to help hold up his arms? Right. You know, it's just like when, when a Christian's trying to do right, we should gather around that and try to encourage it. Amen. So we're going to shout joyfully. We're going to participate in the service. Why? Because we're worshiping God. That's, right. That's how we're going to sing in the song service. I'm not singing to be heard. I'm not singing to be on key. And you guys probably are like, yeah, you exactly, Randy. We, we knew that, brother. <laughs> Amen. You know, but we're worshiping God in the song service. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. You know, and, and one thing, we can all do that, you know. And we're going to be seeking God in the preaching service. You know, like I said, even though we're making improvements, we're not making changes. You know, we're not changing preaching. We're not changing the King James Bible. We're not stepping outside of what the Lord God has asked us to do. But we're going to try to polish it up. We're going to try to clean it up and make it something that, I mean, because we already understand the value, you know. Um, we, me and my wife, when we first got married and we were both working full time, we had money to go to Hawaii and we went to Hawaii and I, you know, and I, I really wanted to have her have a special time. And I walked her into a jewelry store and all the husbands are rolling their eyes right there. Like, why is he bringing this up? Man, I wanted, I wanted her to really enjoy it. So we walked into this jewelry store and the coolest thing. You know, we found out that uh, they had this this little deal where you could pick up uh, like a clam or I think I'm saying the right thing. It's a clam or something. And they said, you could break this open. And guess what? You might find a pearl in there. Oh, an oyster. Something like that. Okay, whatever. But, you know. And, yeah, you know. But 
But we, we get there, and uh, I start picking the lady's brain, like, so how do you know which one to pick? And man, she spilled the beans in about five seconds, man. She's like, just look for the oldest, ugliest one that you can find, and you're going to find one, Randy. And I'm like, okay, okay. So, you know, I, I picked a really ugly one, and we break it open, and there's two. And I was like, whoa. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. Um, me and you, we know the value of what we have here. We know it's precious. Amen? Amen. We know a King James Church is precious. We know the preaching of the Word of God is precious. We know He's worthy to be praised. And if we're going to be around a bunch of people that want to lift Him up, we're going to be part of that. But, you know, people don't understand the value until you get that ugly shell off. You know, so maybe it's trying to ask John in America back there, like, hey, if someone new comes in, could you just greet them? They're like, hey, that's simple. I could shake a hand, you know, and look, they're back there. They're ready. Amen. And, Amen. and, you know, um, it's just about stewardship. So we're worshiping God during the song service. We're seeking God during the preaching service. And sometimes it's not even the preaching. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and, and act like, oh, my messages are so cutting edge every week. It's you know, maybe sometimes you're like, I've heard this a million times, Randy, you know, but maybe the text speaks to you in a different way that week for some reason. And I think anybody who's ever preached, you've had people approach you after you preached and or at least I have. And they'll be like, man, this is what I got out of that message. And I'm like rolling my eyes like, how would you even get that out of that message? I definitely didn't preach that. Well, because God was preaching something to him. It wasn't me. God was doing something in that interaction that I had nothing to do with. You know, like I stood in my place. I gave what I felt the Lord gave me that week. And God was like, was uh, reaching out to people in ways I couldn't even understand. But it's because they came with a joyful spirit to church, you know, and seek, seeking God. Also, shouting out joyfully, you know, is uh, supporting God and his work. You know, and um, in, it could be in just helping clean up, helping set up. It could be in financial giving, you know, which I know in our circle, we don't want to talk about it, but it's true. <laughs> you know, the world is very smart when it comes to things like this. And the world has been known to say more than once, put your money where your mouth is. You know, and a lot of us, we talk a good game. You know, and, and these guys, I mean, in the world, they're like, oh, yeah, you really believe that? Let's open up the checkbook and see how much you believe that. You know, and these, the world is, is not stupid. You know, they have hard hearts. They, they need to be saved, but they're not stupid. Right. A lot of them, a lot of them, I mean, you guys, maybe you could concur with this, but I speak with, some men about why they won't get saved and they say I'm just not willing to live that life I don't know if I could you know and, and I think a lot of times we're sitting there trying to say no God will do it through you like you're not understanding like and they want so much not to be a hypocrite which is good that's excellent you know they're closer than they think right mm -hmm. you know they see the value of what God expects and they don't want to get in his lane and be a dud we don't either and i don't i don't want to i don't want to get in god's lane and be a dud i want to serve him you know but it comes with supporting what, what he's doing you know also we're going to be shouting joyfully sharing god which is fellowshipping you know um uh when you come here are you purposing to fellowship with the brethren or are you just here waiting for the bell ring and you'll be in the car when it's done? You know, or are you here to like, you know what? Maybe I, as small as I am, could en encourage and exhort somebody here to stick with the Lord. You know, I mean, I don't know what, what you know about God. I don't. I don't know what God has done in your life, you know, and... Um, unless you share it, you know, and maybe he's done some things in your life that this congregation needs to hear, you know, and uh, encourage someone, 
You know, I mean, we all got bad stuff. I could put weights on you that might rip your hair off, you know, and but I'm not going to do that. Why? Because God's getting me through stuff. You know, I want to come here and I want to try to be a blessing, try to encourage you, try to help you still stand up tomorrow and the next day and next year if the Lord tarry and hopefully he doesn't. But. But we're, we're going to be showing up intentionally. We're going to be shouting out joyfully. And we're going to be shutting down willingly. <laughs> you know, uh, 2 Timothy 2, 3 says about shutting down the church. It says, endure hardness as a good soldier. <laughs> the bummer about having a church the way we do is we got to break down every time we meet. And it's a bummer. And it's hard, you know. And, I mean, uh, but we got to do it. <coughs> It's hard to clean up, but, you know, what encourages me is our folks all filled out that, that commitment list, you know, Amen. what they're willing to do. So understand this. If, if you're going to miss a service, who's going to pick up the slack? You know, I mean, maybe we could think about that. Like, eh, maybe I should ask Pastor Randy, is there anyone else? Because I got sick. I mean, okay, sure. But, I mean, if you're missing when you could be here, what's that all about? <coughs> You know, so we're all going to pitch in, you know, like a team, you know, and like a good soldier. And um, we're going to endure that hardness, you know, and um, next and and lastly, we're going to share Christ militantly. (laughs) I I like that one. We're going to share Christ militantly. Look at Philippians. Go to Philippians one. Now, I know these are Paul's words, but maybe these could be ours. You know, like maybe it hasn't been in the years past. Maybe it wasn't yesterday, but maybe today it could be and tomorrow. Amen. It says in Philippians 121 for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Amen. You see? That, um, you know, if he's going to give me another heartbeat, if he's going to give me another day, I'm in some way, shape, or form going to use this for him. Amen. You know, and you might not be able to go street preaching. You, not, you might not be standing behind a pulpit preaching to a congregation. You might not be a deacon. You might not be anything with a quote-unquote title. But that doesn't mean that you can't serve God. Amen. And and God expects you to serve him, by the way. He expects you to. He didn't just die for anyone with a title. He died for sinners Amen. of whom I'm chief. Amen. 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 And we need to share Christ, you know, as a church together, you know, so we, we have these functions, you know, and uh, you are able to pitch in some way. That's all I know. But it's up to us to find how you can get in. You know, now maybe you can't be at the track table. I don't know what your situation is, but I bet there's some way that you can help with that track table. I mean, if it's not prayer, I mean, maybe we could start having the the, the church track packing. I mean, we got someone in the church packing a million tracks right now, and God bless them, and it's it's working. But, I mean... Maybe we can get another person doing it, you know? I mean, if we're going to have, like, 12, 13 people at the track table, I mean, we could probably get out more than we've ever gotten, right? I'll tell you that. If we think, if we engage, if we organize, you know, because uh, the devil... In Daniel 7.25, one of the earmarks of the devil is he aims to wear out the saints. That's what he wants to do. And you can't tell me that living in this world, living in this country the way it is, doesn't wear on you. You know, it talks about righteous Lot vexed his righteous soul, you know. And, I mean, we look at Lot, and we can't find that anywhere in there. Where was Lot righteous? This guy was such a hot mess, man. But there was something inside of him that he knew what was right. 
And when it came time to leave, he did leave, you know, and uh, but his soul was vexed from day to day. And I'm not going to sit here and be ignorant enough to think that yours isn't, too. You know, it's hard to be a Christian. It's hard to live for God in this world that's so anti-Christ. Worse and worse every day, you know, but you got to understand, like, the Lord put you in this church for a reason. And the Lord either wants you to get the encouragement or wants you to give the encouragement to other Christians. You know, I know we're all at different levels. I mean, some of us have been saved, you know, for millennia, (laughs) but... But maybe some of us have been saved just a couple weeks, you know, like little Jordan back here, you know. But but the fact is, it's like we're all in different uh, levels. But, I mean, I, I bet you'd have a lot of grace with Jordan, wouldn't you? You know, but what about for your neighbor? You know, we're all in a different spot. You know, and that, that old saying says that many hands make for light work. You know, so... Um, what I'm going to purpose to do, at least for this upcoming year, is we're going to try to organize this thing. We're going to try to get the men together. We're going to try to sharpen up some things, clean up some things, and we're going to try to be faithful with little. You know, and um, I think we're already seeing God do some miraculous stuff. You know, that, I mean, just, just since January, hadn't been like this in a long time. So, um, anyway, let's go ahead and stand. Some thoughts about our church's main purpose. 